Next week is National Poison Control Week, so to get you prepared, we're talking about it now. Amy Hanoyan Fontana, Education Specialist with the Connecticut Poison Control Center, is here with us. Amy, good to have you back. It's always a pleasure. And I am just looking here at all the products that you have brought with you, and I'm saying, I have that in my house, I have that in my house, right. I have these in my house. So let's get started, because this is really important information. Important information. So yes. we're going to pick a couple things here. So the first group I want to talk about is medications. And when we talk about medications, we mean prescription, over-the-counter, naturals, herbals, supplements, everything under the sun for medications. And the what I want to focus on is analgesics, like your acetaminophen, your ibuprofen, your Tylenol. naproxen. Okay. Yes, all those brand names. And... Um, 18% uh, of calls uh, we get from the Poison Center just on analgesics for teens, 13 to mm. 19. So it's a, it's a big deal, and they're getting exposed, maybe taking a double dose, that kind of thing, taking too much. Um, then we have cosmetics and personal care products. This is your number one problem with little kids, okay? Mm -hmm. This is what they tend to put in their mouth. Um, they um, they are mostly non-toxic or minimally toxic. So a typical call is a toddler will put a lipstick in their mouth, something mm. like that. However, we have problems with some of these products, especially some powders. There are certain kind of powders that have talc and certain powders that have cornstarch. And the cornstarch is safe. The talc, if the child breathes it in, can give them problems with their lungs. And we have a lot of beauty products that have alcohol in them, uh, not only mouthwash, uh, but perfumes, aftershaves, hand sanitizer, and alcohol in a little one can be a problem. Uh, then we move along. Yeah. Under the sink chemicals. Under the sink yes. chemicals. Now with these, you really have to call the poison center because they're so varied and you know, telling you what's in each one. Right. But I'd like to zone in on one of our newest ones um, to hit the market, which are these single-use laundry detergent pods or now, Some states have already banned these and others are in the process. And they are very, um, very colorful, very squishy. I mean, you can see a child really being very interested in this, picking it up and eating it. Mm -hmm. um, and we have kids who get very, very sick from these, which is unusual when we're talking about laundry detergent. Yeah, the colors really attract the little ones and they think it's a toy or a candy. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, if, if we can take one out, or they're already out here. Yeah, if you can really get a good look at that. It's just appealing to the little ones. Mm -hmm. It really is. Very really squishy. Really very squishy. And another thing to do is just keep a lock on your cabinet. Keeping locks on cabinets yeah. is excellent. Keeping things up and I away. I have one on mine. So. Locked up. Th that's that's the important thing. Uh, then we move on to um, foreign bodies there. So these are things that kids will pick up and put in their mouth. Um, we have non-toxic items like store-bought Play-Doh, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and silica gel beads. Those are the beads that you put you find like in a new purse or a new Shoe pair. Box. Shoes, right. right. Sometimes they're in like dried meat, that kind of thing, and they're non-toxic. Okay, but p I think parents get really, you know, oh my gosh, what's happening to my child? And they, they need a reassurance from the other end of the line. Sure, I've been there, to be honest with you. That you know, it's you see a broken packet and you're not sure what's gotten in somebody's mouth, yeah. and you, you do do a second. You know, you're freaking out. You, you know? do. You're very nervous. And that's what we're here for. Well, no, it's a no and judgment thank goodness zone. You are. It's Absolutely. A no judgment zone. Yeah. Um, then we have things for an objects that are a little bit more. Um, you know, serious. Um, batteries here. We have button batteries mm -hmm. here, which you think, you know, hey, they're so small, how bad could they be? But I can tell you what I did here. Um, I put this button battery in the hot dog here last night around 7.30 and just keep holding it up, and then yeah. you know we're gonna get the camera to show you exactly what and happened to it. And then I'm gonna to once you take a look at it, I'm gonna just place it down, and I'm gonna cut it open and show you what the button battery did to the inside of the hot dog. And we can think of the hot dog as a child's esophagus, right. and if the button battery gets caught in the esophagus, this is what it's going to do with it. And you can see how you know, how burned it is in there and how blackened it is. Yeah, well, you can see it even before you cut into yes, it. Yes, yeah, yeah, even the back side. Even if you take a look at the back side, it's burnt on the back side there. And what's dangerous is these little but these little button batteries, they tend to maybe be at grandparents' homes or mm -hmm. other relatives, and they may not be as accustomed to monitoring right. their little things and things such as this that can get into little ones' Absolutely. mouths. So you just have to be a little bit more extra careful. And, and, and share the word with your relatives. Absolutely. Button batteries 
these are also in um, products that are we don't think of for kids, like remote controls or hearing aids, like you mm -hmm. said, with the grandparents. Right. Mm -hmm. Then finally, we have topical preparations or things in a tube. Most of the time, things in a tube are mildly toxic or non-toxic, like toothpaste and creams, diaper rash cream. There's a high gross out factor if someone brushes their teeth with diaper rash for cream, sure. but it's not going to really hurt them in the long term. One thing we are worried about is the uh, oral numbing gels, the aura gel, um, that can be really detrimental to a child. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. A lot of great information. Really good reminders, too. And we're going to have that information on our website that you can go to at foxct.com, and we'll also have the number. Okay. The poison control number, which is so handy. Put it on your refrigerator. Store it into your cell phone. You never know when you're going to need it. All right. Thanks so much for being with us once again. Tim, over to you.